I'm Sam from Jessup Says. The focus of my channel is to share and educate on how to buy less, buy better. It's not necessarily about buying less things, it's about buying something that fits its purpose perfectly and serves you for as long as possible. By this stage of the journey, I'm assuming once again that you're standing in probably your bedroom wearing a nice pair of comfortable socks, a pair of comfortable trousers, and an appropriate shirt, maybe a rugby shirt, or maybe even some knitwear. And you're wondering, what is the final step in terms of clothing? Now, footwear is its own segment that we'll definitely dig into, but I'd like to finish off the clothing section before we get into that. The type of outerwear that you choose can really depend on the day that you have in front of you, what kind of events or activities you're going to be doing, what the weather is outside. I mean, we all know these kind of normal selection criteria but what you choose is going to make the difference between a good day and a bad day. I know that might seem like a bit of an exaggeration but genuinely if you're out and it starts raining and you don't have a raincoat then that can ruin your day if you're not in the right uh, headspace. So getting your outerwear right is a critical decision. As outerwear is a massive and diverse topic this is going to be a bit of a longer one but uh, it's one that's going to be quite enjoyable as I personally love outerwear and it's a place in the way that you can add a lot of style and a lot of character to your outfit. So let's get into out of way. As I just said, outerwear can be a place where you really embrace your unique style, maybe a fun color, an interesting cut, or some pockets. The other thing about outerwear is that it's typically quite expensive, so it's definitely something that you want to invest in rather than buying something poor quality and then having to replace it. By the same token, I understand that sometimes $200 is all you can afford, but don't be ashamed to use the same information and approach that we discussed today and in general to look for good quality things at your local vintage store or on places like eBay. I'm always scanning both of these places for quality items as you never know what pops up online and you never know what kind of a deal you're going to find. So it is worth keeping an eye on. As again, outerwear is a place where you can spend a lot of money to get a very good quality thing, but it is a higher entry price than say, socks at you know a couple of dollars each. As for my outerwear style, it's a typical mix of classic colors, classic silhouettes, things like workwear, military, classic tailoring, but all in a way that I can mix and match it with my jeans, chinos, and flannels without feeling too out of place. I feel like I've got a pretty good balance of the different events that I wear things to and the things that I have to fill those events, but there are definitely a few things that I don't have the traditional versions of, and over time I'll probably look to fill those gaps out. So let's get into what it actually means for the following types of outerwear. We're going to discuss a work shirt or an overshirt, military jacket, a vest, a blazer, an overcoat, and of course a rain jacket. A work shirt or overshirt is a versatile piece of clothing that sits somewhere between a shirt and a jacket, which is why I often call them a shacket. As the name suggests, it's designed to be worn over your regular shirt to provide an extra layer of warmth and of course protection if you're a worker. The work shirt has its roots in the early 20th century when it was worn by mostly blue collar workers as a durable and practical garment that could withstand the rigors of manual labor. It was made from tough fabrics like denim or canvas, and these were often adorned with large pockets and reinforced seams, making them ideal for carrying around tools and other work essentials. Over time, the work shirt became a popular item in menswear, with many designers putting their own spin on the classical style. Today, you can find work shirts made from a range of materials, including flannel, chambray, even leather, and they all have their own unique look and feel. There is a really cool suede one from Private White VC that I've been wanting for a few years, but suede jackets are just insanely expensive, so maybe one day. In terms of a specific material that you might want to look into, there are, like I said, many, many materials, and pretty much any material you can imagine comes in a work shirt, but in my opinion, one of the best ones out there is the original material that it was kind of made from, which is cotton moleskin. Moleskin is a type of cotton fabric that is known for its durability and softness. It has a dense weave and a brushed finish, giving it a slightly fuzzy texture that feels really comfortable and great against the skin. The history of work shirts and moleskin fabric is intertwined, as moleskin has been a popular choice for workwear for well over a century. In addition to the practical benefits, moleskin also has a very distinct look that I feel is quite hard to replicate with other fabrics. It has a subtle sheen and a rich deep color that make it look expensive and sophisticated. Plus it's also so soft and comfortable it's a pleasure to wear even for extended periods of time. When it comes to the fit of a work shirt there are a few things you want to keep in mind to ensure that you get the most out of this versatile garment. First and foremost a work shirt should be comfortable and allow for a full range of motion. 
and this means that it should be roomy enough to move in without feeling restrictive but also not so that it looks baggy or sloppy. In terms of length a work shirt should fall somewhere between the waist and the hip depending on your preference. I think actually traditionally a lot of work shirts were cut as cropped jackets so if you like a cropped jacket you could do a cropped work shirt and this will give you enough coverage to keep you warm but at the same time not so long that it gets in the way if you were actually wearing it as a work shirt. When it comes to the sleeve length you want a work shirt to finish at the wrist or just below it and be easy enough to roll up the sleeves should you need to. The collar should be sturdy enough to stand up on its own but not so rigid that it feels uncomfortable or restricts your movement. When it comes to colors for a work shirt it really depends on your personal style and what you're looking for. That said the classic menswear palette is going to be a go-to here. Neutral colors like beige, gray and navy are all going to be a safe bet for a work shirt as they're easy to pair with other items in your wardrobe and will ensure that the work shirt has a sort of timeless appeal. These colors also tend to work in a variety of different settings from on a job site to a farmer's market on the weekend. If you're looking for other alternatives things like olive greens, rusty colors and burgundies can also work quite well for a work shirt adding a pop of color without going overboard. These colors also pair well with denim and other rugged fabrics and when you're combining it with the moleskin fabric it's all going to give you a classic sort of outdoorsy look but that's well put together and perfect for fall and winter if you choose these kinds of colors. Now the work shirt I've chosen here is fairly obvious it's the Informale WS50. It's a garment that I wear almost every single day. It's wildly comfortable and importantly it's really good at covering me for a lot of sort of in between -y days. So days that aren't super cold but aren't super warm. Days that are kind of windy but hot. It's really the perfect all round garment. It also fits me great. It's got a simple navy color which means it's very easy to wear. It's basically become a bit of a blazer alternative for those sort of middle months which in Melbourne tends to be all four seasons. A full video exists on the WS50 if you want to check that one out. Onto a military jacket, sometimes called a safari jacket, which is a type of outerwear that takes its inspiration from uniforms worn by soldiers in various military branches. These jackets are known to be practical, durable, and feature utilitarian design. As a man who likes pockets, this is really where you're gonna fill out all your pocket needs. Over time, military jackets became a popular clothing item among citizens as well, as people began to appreciate the rugged style and the functional features, a bit like a work shirt. Today, there are many different types of military jackets available, each with its own unique design and history, as well as often the camo print and the fabric that it's on. As well as the traditional military jackets you're probably thinking of, military jacket styles actually include things like bomber jackets, pea coats, and trench coats, all of the modern variants of which are inspired by the original garments that were designed for the military. Share the same commitment to durability, functionality, and timeless style. One of the most popular materials used in military jackets is cotton, thanks to its durability, breathability, and ease of care. Cotton also comes in a range of different weights and finishes, from lightweight poplin to heavy duty canvas. Some cotton jackets also can be treated with water resistant finishes to help repel moisture, making them even more versatile and weather resistant. Once again, the fit of your military jacket is going to be key. It's a functional and practical jacket that should be roomy yet tailored with a silhouette that allows for ease of movement but still maintains a sort of streamlined look. A good military jacket has things like internal drawstrings at the waist to allow it to be tightened and create a sleeker look and then loosened off if you're adding a layer or adding a couple of layers underneath. It's probably no surprise here that the best colors are going to be military adjacent. Olive green, navy blue, brown are all popular colors for military jackets. Olive green is a versatile and classic color. Navy blue is a little bit more subdued, a bit more timeless, and brown is very rugged and outdoorsy. Just choose which one that fits your style. Taking a well-deserved break from Informale, let's talk about what I think is the world's best outerwear maker, Private White VC. My safari jacket from Private White VC is definitely up there as one of my favorite things to wear. The fabric is insanely soft, the cut is fantastic, and the fabric is patinaed fantastic. Fantastically, it's just an all around great garment. Full videos out there as well if you're curious. Now, I don't know why, but I am a vest guy. There's just something about it. It's one of those, if you know, you know things, maybe. For me, it's a combination of a series of extra pockets and a critical layer that adds some warmth, but not a ton of warmth. It's like the perfect balance of warmth and extra pockets, but also a layer. There are a lot of different types of vests, from fishing to hunting to an insulated puffer vest. Whatever your vest interests may be, don't worry, because there is a vest out there for you. The type of material you want your vest to be made from will vary a lot, depending 
on the type of vest that you're interested in. But in this case, don't be afraid of synthetic materials that are designed to do specific things like keep you warm or keep you from getting wet. It really depends what the vest is going to be used for and then the material that suits that purpose, the vest is the one that you want to choose. Now when it comes to the fit of a vest or a gilet as they're sometimes called, you want it to feel snug but not too tight. As you don't know what you're going to be layering it over or under, you want to make sure that it has room once again to move and allow things to be layered under it or over it and then still be able to move. This means you want to make sure things like the armholes are large enough to allow for a full range of motion, but you also still want the back of it to be nice and tailored to your body without any excess fabric in it. I would again stress that you want to consider how you plan to wear the garment so you choose a size that feels comfortable and allows you the most range of movement depending on what you're going to be combining and wearing with it. As for the colors, I don't think there are really any vest color rules that I'm aware of, so choose something that suits your style and your wardrobe. I think a bright orange or a red one could look quite cool, like a Marty McFly sort of vibe. And I've also always liked the olive green colored ones in particular, which is going to be obvious in a second, but I think it's just a very easy color to wear as a layering color. Navy is obviously an obvious one, but talking a lot about navy. My current favorite vest is my insulated gelée from the once again Private White VC. I find the color is super versatile, the cut and design are very comfortable, and the wool insulation makes it really, really comfortable in a lot of different weathers. It's three and a half season. And of course there is a full video on that if you want more details. Now we know that every man should own at least one blazer and it should probably be a navy blazer. But what is a blazer exactly instead of just a suit jacket? Well, the Oxford American Dictionary describes it as a sports jacket not worn with matching trousers. A blazer out of nice lightweight fabrics that doesn't crease easily with simple details make it very easy to wear in a huge range of places. Sadly, I personally don't actually yet own a navy blazer, though I do know that I need one. So the blazer that I own, the one that I want to discuss today, probably the third, maybe fourth blazer that you'd want to buy, which it was for me, but I've actually sold or given away all my suits and all my blazers in the meantime, which means that all I have left is this blazer. But let me tell you about the perfect buy less, buy better blazer that maybe you should own. As I said, the navy blazer is something that every man should own and have in their wardrobe. And there are many reasons why. Firstly, it's incredibly versatile. It can be dressed up or down to suit a range of different occasions. You can pair it with a shirt and tie for a formal look or dress it down with a t-shirt and jeans for a more casual vibe, maybe roll up the sleeves. Secondly, it's a timeless classic that has been in style for literally decades and investing in a high quality navy blazer is a smart choice that will pay off in years to come. A navy blazer literally can do it all. It's a perfect choice for events where you want to look sharp and put together but don't have to wear a full suit. As for the materials, there are many that you may want to use for your navy blazer but wool is probably the most common. The thing that makes the biggest difference in the fabric is actually the weave of the fabric. The weave or pattern can impact several characteristics of the fabric, including texture, drape, and durability. For example, a tight weave like twill or herringbone creates a smooth and dense fabric that is more durable and often drapes very well. In contrast, an open weave like hop sack or linen is a more textured fabric that is often more lightweight and breathable, but may not be as durable. Hop sack in particular is a weave that I would recommend for a super versatile navy blazer. Hop sack is a type of wool fabric that has a distinct texture and weave pattern. The fabric is created by weaving two threads over and under two other threads, creating a basket-like pattern that's visible on the surface of the fabric. The texture of the fabric is somewhat rough to the touch, with a slightly nubby feel that adds depth and interest to the material. Hopsack material is known for being lightweight and breathable, making it a perfect material for warm weather. What's also fantastic about hopsack material is that it's also very, very durable. Even though it is a more lightweight and open weave material, it's known to be very durable and resistant to wrinkles, making it a very practical choice for a range of occasions meaning that you could do something like take it off fold it up put it in the overhead locker and the airplane take it out when you get to your destination put it on and then luckily the material doesn't look all crinkled and rubbish and you still look good to go for the fit here for a garment that you want to wear and last a lifetime I would strongly suggest in this one particular case going made to measure even if you've got a fairly quote-unquote normal body and if you don't have a quote-unquote normal body then I would strongly suggest going for a bespoke spoke garment and getting a garment that fits you absolutely perfectly because it does pay off. Perfect fit is going to be incredibly important for your ability to wear this garment a lot and for long periods of time. Having a 
garment that is designed for you, for your body, for the intricacies of your body, is going to do a lot to allow you to move properly, wear it in a way that's going to fit your body properly, and honestly, it's gonna give you a lot more confidence when the garment fits you and it moves with you. I understand that made to measure or bespoke garments are a lot more expensive or seem to be a lot more expensive than ready to wear or off the rack brands, but if you actually investigate it, there isn't really a huge amount of cost difference. Well, it depends on what fabric you use and what tailor you use and all of those things, but it really is worth the somewhat small investment to get a fit that is designed for your body and have a garment that ultimately is going to wear and fit your body for a long, long time as opposed to just the year or so that we've been considering. As for color, probably navy blue, considering we're talking about a navy blazer, but definitely a darker shade of navy to be as versatile as possible. The other thing I wanted to comment here under color, though it's not a color, is the style and details that you want to choose. Now, I don't actually know what's best, but I believe that the most versatile combination of features in terms of the design would be something like notched lapels, partly lined so that it's nice and cool, dark buttons, maybe an oak, and patched pockets on the front. I would say single breasted with a three roll two, so that means that there are three buttons down the front, but you only have a button the bottom two, and that's probably the most classic and traditional and versatile style. As much as I really wanna recommend a double breaster with gold buttons down the front and make it look all like, you know, traditional navy blazer, it's probably not the most versatile way that you can make a navy blazer. So maybe just follow what I've just said. The blazer that I have is a made to measure from Mawson Osa, which is a very high-end tailor based out of Sydney. The blazer is honestly amazing. The fabric is from Fox Brothers and it's absolutely lovely. The pattern is beautiful and it's really aging, it's getting softer as I wear it. The actual design of the garment is pretty much exactly what I've just mentioned. All the details are there. It's basically the perfect blazer, but it's just not navy and it's not hop sack material. I absolutely love this blazer and I would recommend it to anyone to go and get a custom tailored jacket for themselves if they can do so and if you can afford to. Overcoats is another topic that we could talk about pretty much all day. There are so many different styles and combinations and colors and materials from super heavy woolen ones, lightweight woolen ones. There really are an infinite number of different styles of overcoats that you can investigate or be interested in if you are so interested. For today's video, we're going to talk about woolen overcoats, which come in a variety of different styles and length from around knee length to about ankle length. They can feature a range of details, including being single breasted or double breasted, having notch lapels or peak lapels and they have lots of different pockets maybe a belt maybe a hood maybe a zip out lining some adjustable cuffs you never know overcoats can do it all now when it comes to woolen overcoats one of the most common materials is melton wool melton wool is a dense and heavyweight material that is known for its durability warmth and wind resistant properties it's also water resistant to a degree thanks to the natural lanolin oil that is present in the wool fibers melton wool itself is typically made from long staple wool that are tight tightly wound together and then heavily felted together to create a dense and durable material. The weight of mountain wool can vary depending on the desired level of warmth and durability, but it typically ranges anywhere from 24 to 32 ounces. The heavier the weight of the mountain wool, the more warmth and the more wind resistance that it will provide. So if you're in a really cold and really windy environment, then I'd recommend a really thick and dense mountain wool. The other side of that is that a heavier wool coat means literally a heavier coat. So you wanna balance that and not have a coat that's gonna, you know, crush you into the floor slowly. Now, as for the fit, as this is a coat, not a jacket, you want it to fall either just below the knee, close to the ground as you're comfortable with. You also want it to fit comfortably over things like suits, jackets, vests, everything else that we've discussed today. You want this thing to be the outermost layer that you're going to put on. But you do want to make sure that things like the shoulders fit nicely and that you don't want it to be too tight to restrict movement, especially under your arms, under your armholes. So make sure you put it on, you're moving your arms around a lot to make sure that it's not too bulky and you don't look like an Eskimo. The sleeves might be a bit long and maybe it's a bit long in some areas, but that's actually okay because honestly, when it's on, it's real design and it's real function is to keep you warm. So all you wanna make sure is that it covers you up nicely, can do up really nicely at the front and it's not pulling and that you can you know do it up as tightly or as high as you can or want or desire to, depending on the cut and design of the overcoat that you've got. 
As for colors, I think traditionally things like black and charcoal are probably the most common colors. Maybe things like browns and camel colors being close behind. And they all are very good colors and ones that I would look to when choosing an outer coat. As for my outer coat, well, once again, we have Private White VC and I own their great coat, which is, as the name says, it is a great coat. The wool is insanely thick and comfortable. And yes, I sort of lose height when I'm wearing it and I don't have a lot of height to lose, but it's really worth it because it is warm, it's wind resistant, and it's sort of water resistant-ish, and it helps out on those super, super cold days that you wouldn't expect we'd get here in Australia, but we do. She is a big, big, heavy coat, but she is absolutely worth it, and she was worth the investment. The final kind of outerwear that every man needs is of course a raincoat. Raincoats are essential item in a wardrobe, especially for those living in climates with unpredictable weather. There are a variety of different styles of raincoats ranging from classic trench coats to more modern designs and more tech weary things. It really depends once again on your staff. When choosing a raincoat, it is important to consider factors such as the climate you live in, your personal style, and of course how you plan to use the coat. As for materials, well, raincoats are typically made from either waterproof or water resistant materials such as rubberized fabrics or things like Gore-Tex or canvas or even wax materials. There are a range of different ways that you can waterproof a material. Gore-Tex in particular is a very popular material as used in high-end rain wear that is specifically designed to keep you dry. It's a synthetic material made out of expanded polytetrafluoroethylene and is known to be excellent in both waterproofing and breathability. Gore-Tex can also be made extremely lightweight and very durable, which makes it a great option for outdoor activities like hiking or camping. On the other hand, Gore-Tex can be relatively expensive compared to other materials. I know there are other materials out there that perform better in certain situations than Gore-Tex does. I think Gore-Tex is just kind of the umbrella of do it all in the best possible way fabric. The other negative about Gore-Tex is that it can look a bit too technical for everyday wear, so be aware of that. Wax cotton is kind of the tailoring or menswear alternative to these kinds of technical fabrics and it's material used in raincoats, particularly in the traditional British outerwear style. Wax cotton is created by waxing, literally, the cotton fabric, which creates a waterproof barrier that can help repel rain whilst allowing the fabric to be breathable like cotton is. Wax cotton raincoats are known for their durability and a wax coating can be replaced and reapplied over time to make the garment last for a very, very long time, but also to maintain that waterproofing ability in the nature of the fabric. Things like Gore-Tex, they do deteriorate over time in their ability to repel water, whereas wax cotton won't if you re-wax it. The downsides of wax cotton is that some varieties of it can be quite heavy and quite stiff. It can have one of those typical break-in periods and the wax coating can wear off over time, meaning that you have to invest the time to re-wax it as you wear it. You want a raincoat to fit like an overcoat as it's probably going to be cold when it's raining, so make sure that you allow for enough layers to be worn underneath. You also want to consider how long it is because longer ones are able to cover more of the front of your thighs and protect your trousers from the rain and shorter ones are typically more sporty and lightweight and don't really do much other than keep your middle section dry. I suggest having a longer one just because they're actually designed to keep you more dry than the shorter ones are and to protect you from the rain and ultimately that's what a raincoat is for. As for color, I think it's probably worthwhile owning both a Gore-Tex and a wax cotton jacket. The Gore-Tex for more athletic and outdoorsy things but it's likely a black jacket because all outdoorsy things tend to be black. So let's talk about wax cotton and the option of colors you have there. Now you may immediately think of a barber jacket jacket or a private white VC waxed walker and rightly so. I really want one of those and have wanted one of those for quite a while and they're super cool versatile jackets in a sort of greeny olivey browny color. But wax cotton also comes in a lot of lighter colors to be worn in more dressy situations. But honestly I love the look of a barber even over a blazer. I think it's a classic look so I would suggest to most people to go for an olive color as it's really easy to match and it's really contextually cool and the color itself is quite interesting and a bit different than the classical navy. On the other hand, if you're interested in navy and you just can't get that out of your head, then a navy wax jacket is probably a great option too. The one that I own is from Informale and it is their walking coat, which is made from a more lightly waxed cotton than the more barber, thicker, sort of waxier fabrics. Cotton itself is much finer than you'd see on a barber. So it doesn't look like a wax jacket in the sense of when you're comparing it to a barber. It's a hybrid raglan sleeve and it goes down below my legs. It's very, very comfortable and protects me from the rain and the wind. I've been wearing it more recently than I'd liked because of how rainy it's been here in Melbourne, but it's absolutely proving its worth and it's going to be a very, very useful garment for me. 
Outerwear is an essential part of your wardrobe and it's critical to invest in pieces that are quality and that fit your personal style. It's better to have a small specific collection of classic colors, patterns and silhouettes that can be designed in a variety of ways to suit different occasions and weather conditions. While it's okay to start with affordable options, it's always wise to invest in higher quality items that will last a longer time. Don't forget to prioritize functionality and versatility and also remember that you're not limited in the colors and styles and designs that you want to wear so this is one time that you can definitely branch out and try something a bit more unique and a bit more interesting anyway thanks very much for watching links are in the description as always look forward to seeing you guys in the next one